defense, but hoping to respond in a big way against the best thing for Ohio State is the fact that they know Michigan just got taken to the wire. Every single player on that field very aware of what just went down in the big house. Here's the Heisman frontrunner, C.J. Stroud, getting it to Harrison Jr. He is so talented as the flag reigns in, and yet he secures that with Deontay Banks all over him. Marvin Harrison Jr. Pass interference, defense, number three. The penalties decline, the results of the play, first down. Arguably the nation's top receiver, and you see why, 29 yards. Just an unbelievable catch, obviously. Man, oh, man. Draped, I mean, just completely draped by Deontay Banks, who was called for pass interference. You can see the concentration from Marvin Harrison Jr., just one of the best in the business, regardless of the level. And now Henderson, he goes ahead for two yards, and that's good news, Katie, that he does that. Oh, yeah, Tess, he told me pregame, I am ready to go. Apparently, he has had a tremendous week of practice. Coaches say he looks strong and fast. He actually wanted to play last weekend against Indiana, but Ryan Day said sometimes you have to protect a player from himself, and this comes as good news as Mayan Williams is unavailable today for the Buckeyes. He's been dealing with nagging foot injury, missed last week, as they go with Marvin Harrison again. And that goes for six yards. It'll be third and one. I think Henderson back is massive. Obviously, without Mayan Williams today, expect Henderson to get a lion's share of the carries, the home run hitter there with tremendous speed out of the backfield. Four down territory here for the Buckeyes. Third and one. Henderson get the first down. C.J. Stroud, quarterback number one nationally in passing efficiency and touchdown passes, Greg. So incredibly accurate. Done a great job of distributing the football to one of the most talented wide receiver cores in America. Stroud on first down. Quick strike, but it bounces right off the chest of Julian Fleming. It was Banks who had coverage there. So far, as you can tell, this Maryland team answering the challenge on the outside playing very physical that's i think their approach today potentially containing this passing attack you have to be extremely physical with the wide receivers and that's what brian williams the defensive coordinator was preaching all week long back to henderson Look at all that green turf in front of him as he cuts inside the 10 and just walks it right in. Quick start, Buckeyes. 31-yard touchdown catch, Travion Henderson. Five touchdown passes on the year now for Stroud. And just great design. Little misdirection with the throwback. And how about the block by Stover? The tight end coming from across the field and making the final effort to allow Henderson to break free. What a great start for the Buckeye offense. C.J. Stroud, first quarterback in the history of the Big Ten to have back-to-back Repeat the try. 30 touchdown seasons. And just like that, in no time at all, and brings his team down the field. And it's good to have Henderson seven zip as Trevion Henderson took it 37 yards for the touchdown. First time Ohio State has been here since 2018. This is Smith from the three yard line. Octavian Smith still making a go of it. It is fourth down. He's short. Do you go for it? Askins keeps it. Dives in. Touchdown, Buckeye. First and goal on the one. Fleet Davis is in. Touchdown, Maryland. And the Terrapins are going for the win. Pigram looking. Throws. No, incomplete. Ohio State survives. That was a thriller. 52-51 to 51 in overtime. 
To Leah Tongavailoa to get things started here as he throws back against the grain. And Dupree with the blocks in front. C.J. Dupree goes high hurdling. And that's a good start for the Terrapins. And they need that after the past two weeks of offensive struggles, Greg. Absolutely. And this is a good day to throw the football. No weather conditions that will factor in. A nice little throwback here to Dupree. And how about the run after catch and the hurdle at the end. Nicely done by the tight end. That was Denzel Burke at six foot one. He jumped over. Hemby is cut down Andy by Harry. Eichenberg. Test some good news for the Terps today. Starting left guard Mason Lunsford is back in the lineup after missing the past two games due to a concussion. His return allows Jahari Branch to resume his role at center. Maryland now has its intended starting lineup in front of Talia. That is good news as Hemby is tackled by Steel Chambers. They had a true freshman play in center the past two weeks. And that is massive, too, because Talia took an awful lot of hits the last couple weeks. The offense really could never get going at any point in the last two games. But we all know that Talia is an excellent thrower when you give him time. And he's a guy that really kind of runs a little hot. If he gets off to a fast start, look out. He could potentially have a day. And Mike Loxley knows that as a play caller and as an offensive mind himself. Tonga Bible on third and seven. As he gets it complete, hooking up right over the middle to Dupree again for a Maryland first down. This is really nice by Tonga Bailoa pressing up in the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, and finding Dupree settling up over the ball. Take a shot right here if I'm Maryland. A little heavy play action, see if he can't throw it over their heads. Pressure off the edge. They swing it out to Hemby, who could not secure it. Flag is down. Illegal formation, more than four players in the backfield, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. And we opened up this broadcast saying the message is do not look ahead to what comes next week. But these are the Ohio State games before Michigan that are notable. Yeah, notable for sure, like you referenced. I mean, it's, it, like it's human nature to consider what's coming next week. It's always going to be in the back of your mind. You cannot allow it to affect your preparation. As he quickly goes to Jarrett, Rock Jarrett, who's been dealing with an injury. But the veteran's been a steady contributor, top 15 in Maryland history in career touchdowns. Great competitor, too, Rock Jarrett, wanting to be out there at less than 100% right now. But he's a guy that Ohio State's going to have to account for all game long in the slot. Second down and eight after the seven-yard reception. Man in his face and put down. Flag is down as Tui Molaow crashes home on Tonga Vailoa. Yeah, they might get Tui Molaow for a face mask here because it looked like he kind of grabbed Talia as he was going by. Wow. What an unfortunate play there for Tui Mola Al, who is all over. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 44, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And let's take a look as Mola Al is going by. It does look like it kind of grabs a little bit. I think it's a good call. As you can see, obviously, Ryan Day not happy, but. The way that Talia kind of sold it as his head went to the right. Exactly. I think it was very obvious there for the official. I think it was the correct call, though. Just an unfortunate break there after it was perfectly diagnosed by JT Tui Molaow. That been... head turn is what's going to get the flag out every time. Absolutely. But they better account for 44 on the oh. end of the line of scrimmage because if they don't, I'm not sure he's ever going to have a day like he had against Penn State a couple weeks back, but... He's certainly capable of taking over the game. He is a destructive force, as dynamic and quick off the ball as anybody in the game. First down run, Littleton goes ahead for three yards as he's taken down by Eichenberg. I think it's going to be an interesting approach for Mike Loxley 
throughout the course of this game. I think at his core, he'd love to run hyperspeed tempo. He'd love to speed it up. But knowing the talent that resides on the other side of the field, going to have to play a little keep away, a little ball control. He said he doesn't want to slow the game down too much, but he's got to be very mindful of just how good that Ohio State offense is. Second and seven. They bring it around with the pitch to the outside to Jared. But it was well defensed that time as Tanner McAllister stayed with it. He's really like having a coach on the field. Played for Jim Knowles at Oklahoma State. Just a great job, too, of breaking down in the open field. A little triple option for the most part. It's a quick pitch, but anytime you have Rock Jarrett in the open field, it's difficult to contain him. Good job there by McAllister, kind of breaking down, allowing him to make the first move, and then shooting his hips and making the tackle. Third down and four. I wonder, two down territory here for Maryland potentially. Field goals aren't going to beat Ohio State. Tonga Vailoa just trying to keep it alive, and then he is taken down, and it is Jack Sawyer who takes him down. Sawyer had one and a half sacks a week ago, and they move him around a lot. He's an active defensive end. Yeah, and that was nicely done there as they brought Denzel Burke off. Travion Henderson had the perfect start in his return, but after scoring his touchdown, he was visibly in pain limping over here on the sidelines. He had conversations with trainers. It really does. I think it's a tough place to play. I really do. 10 to 6. And with that, a chance to check in with Kevin in the studio. Good afternoon, Tess. Time now for our Mayhem Moment, brought to you by Allstate. Yorkers, they score first, 3-0 ensuing kickoff bug. It's that outstanding freshman, Nicholas Singleton. Yeah, a really good job of putting the running back back to return. Kicks Kev, they have great vision. They can find the lane. That Nittany line, number 10, is pretty special. Right now, 14-10 Penn State on the road. Back to you, Tess. Penn State team that shut down Maryland a week ago. And had a good bat with Ohio State back on October 29th. Littleton cannot escape Steel Chambers. Chambers, the converted running back who just gets better and better as a linebacker. How about this? As you can see, Maryland, if you want anything to kind of explain to you what's happened in this game so far, if you're just joining us here in the first 20 minutes, Maryland has been up to the task. And outside of the first drive, Ohio State really has not been super consistent offensively. And Tonga Bailoa is 9 of 9. This is Copeland. And Copeland can find anything just a yard that time as Tanner McAllister was the one who cleaned it up. So it'll be third and eight. So Leah Tonga Vailoa, over 100 yards, doesn't have an incompletion. Copeland injured at the end of that play. His medical team is looking at him. Here's third and eight. Talia gets it out quickly and gets it complete for a first down as he connects with Dante Demas. What I'm trying to figure out with Ohio State is it's third and eight and their corners are playing at eight or nine or ten yards and getting a little bit of depth. You can see right here Denzel Burke. He's retreating and just allows such an easy completion underneath. I mean, uh, you got to be more aggressive in the secondary. You can't just give away freebies. Keep it on the ground with Jarrett. Rock Jarrett finds a seam. A flag is down, though, back at the 38-yard line. They're going to get Jayshon Jones, I believe, for a hold. Holding offense, number six, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Jayshon Jones having to hold that block for quite a while on the jet sweep. You see as he's tied up with McAllister. 
You can see McAllister's body go down. Can't really see the jersey grab right there, but based on how McAllister twisted, it certainly looked like Jay Sean had a fist full of jersey. And another first and ten penalty that has Maryland very off schedule. First and 18. Talia again gets it out quickly, but this time it's incomplete as he was looking for Jones, who was just flagged on the penalty, and he was covered by Ransom. A tough two-play sequence here for Jason Jones. Ball was a little bit behind, as you can see. Talia say, my fault, bro. Just a little bit behind, but one that you would think that the receiver could possibly reel in, but it would have been a nice catch as Jason was moving across the been tough to reach out behind it and make the grab. Second and 18. They pick up the pressure. Tonga by Lowe downfield and gets it complete to Demas. Big play, Terps. Man, what a great play here by Demas. Just a little go ball, man. One on one, underthrown deep ball as he's working against Jordan Hancock. 50-50 ball and the guy that's six foot four and chained is gonna win that almost every single time. Excellent job by the big body wide receiver. And now they quickly get it to Rock Jarrett. And Jarrett will have it. And he gets it just inside the 30-yard line. And Jarrett's hurt on the sideline, but let's go back to the catch. I mean. When you have a guy that's six foot four, and you just throw it up, man, give him a chance, right? And allow him, especially on a slightly underthrown deep ball, it's going to be advantage wide receiver just about every time. It's a good throw and an excellent catch by Demas. Tonga by Lois, 13 of 14 for 161 yards here in this first half against Ohio State. Rock went for nine yards, second and one. And Littleton will push the pile. As it'll be a first down, Maryland's at 25. Antoine Littleton goes 235 pounds. He's a big guy. Actually, he lost nearly 60 pounds. Got up to 290 during COVID when he was away from football during his true freshman year. Now they list him at six foot 235, the power back. Absolutely. This would be a spot right here if I'm Dan Enos. I want to go heavy play action, see if I can throw it downfield. Here's Talia off of it. Has time to think about it. And that was battered away by Lathan Ransom. And a flag comes in right at the point with Rock Jarrett. A lot of contact there in the back end. Pass interference. Defense. Number 12. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul automatic first down it's a good call it's just unfortunate as the defender because ransom's in pretty good shape but the throw is off target it's in behind rock jared and as rock jared turns to try to make a play on it ransom can't quite turn back in time to make a play on the ball and they're going to get him on the collision so a good call but just unfortunate there for ransom first down at the buckeyes 13 yard line Littleton gets inside the 10 yard line. Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator, obviously first year in Columbus. What an incredible coach he is. I mean, just phenomenal, phenomenal coach, great tactician. But right now, his defensive front is getting moved off the ball. Remember, this is a Maryland team that has really struggled offensively the last couple weeks, but now back to 100% up front, and they're playing like it. Second and six, they run option. Talia keeps it himself. It'll be third and five as he was taken down by Eichenberg. So here's a big moment coming up for the Terps. We've talked about it already. Positive yards on this third down play, and I'm thinking go for it if I'm Mike Logsley. I, I just, I know that field goals might keep you in it, but ultimately if the goal is to win it, you got to score touchdown. So here, I'm absolutely giving the green lights to your coordinator saying, hey, four down territory, get you a fourth and manageable. Third down and five. 
Tonga Vivola looking for an option. Now he's going to sprint it himself, and it will be first and goal, Maryland. Hickman and Ransom had a collapse on him. Really nicely done here by Talia Tonga Vailoa. As you can see, dives forward, knows exactly how far he has to go to get it. Identified during the mesh that they were in man coverage, he takes off and picks up the first down. Excellent recognition by the quarterback. The fullback, Joseph Burns, comes in, and 235 pound Littleton is the featured back. They have not scored a touchdown since the fourth quarter, November 5th at Wisconsin. I formation for Maryland, looking to take the lead against number two. Play action, Tonga by Lowen to the end zone, batted away, incomplete. He was looking for Dupree, but it was well defensed by Ohio State. Well defensed by Dupree, too. I mean, that thing was going to be intercepted by Ransom. Ball's thrown high and inside, but look at Dupree put that hand in and swat it away. Great play there by the tight end, as you can see Mike Loxley saying, no, dude, no, 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 not there. But I like the, I like the play action on first and ten. Just you can't throw it inside. Second and goal. Trying to reach for it is Littleton. Still Chambers. Fitting that hole, filling it in. They'll be third and goal. Take a look here. Does the ball across the plane? No. Be careful reaching that football out, especially as you're in traffic. That ball could easily get ripped away there at the goal line. Two downs to get it if you're the Terps. They got a jumbo backfield. They bring an offensive lineman in, put 89 on the shirt and say, we're going big time. Talia on third and goal to the end zone. Touchdown, Terps Dupree. And Maryland takes the lead over Ohio State. And what a play by Talia Tugabailoa. A little 320 loop pass left. But he evades and gets it off. And when you're rolling to your left, it's really difficult to put touch on the football. But he does it beautifully. And Dupree makes a big play. Incredibly well-managed 14-play drive by Talia Tugabailoa. May have gotten away with one in the end zone that he was helped out with that could have been an interception. But then when he had his chance, when the moment arrived, he delivered to that big guy, C.J. Dupree. Yeah, this was really nice, too. I mean, you got Zach Harrison there right in his face. Dupree was wide open initially, and the coverage got a little better as the play went along. But as you see, Mike Loxley loving it. Two throws out of three plays. I think they respect the front for the Ohio State, that's for sure. But just a great job there of execution. You know, guys, coming off of two losses, Talia Tungavailo was frustrated. He said his older brother, Tua, called him this week and told him to remain confident. He said when people face adversity, they often change the way they do things, how they act. He said great leaders continue to be the same person through the ups and the downs of the season. Talia said it was a great reminder at the right time from his greatest supporter. I love that, too. Obviously, I mean... Having a resource like that, hey, I'll just call the franchise quarterback. But what a year two is having, and there's no doubt bouncing back from adversity is something the Tonga Bailoa family knows a lot of, and Talia has done so beautifully today. Here's Johnson from the five yard line. You know, we had a conversation with Mike Loxley yesterday as we sit here 13 10 Maryland over the number two team in the country, a Maryland team that was shut out last week against Penn State. And he said, listen, we're not going to play scared. Right. You come to Maryland for these kind of games. We're going to be aggressive. Play a little desperate. Absolutely. Oh, why not, right? Like, throw throw haymakers at them. And that's that's really been the approach. Man, we got nothing to lose. Right. We're going to go out and we're going to try to take them down, right? I mean, obviously, Ohio State, so much firepower, so incredibly gifted on offense. And they have such great players really all over the field. But either way, man, they have to put their pants on just like you do. And 
there's no denying that if you listen to a lot of Ohio State coverage this past week, a lot of the focus has been on next week, not as much on the week that's right here. Anderson with the carry as he gets out to the 31-yard line. I think it's easy, too. I mean, look, Maryland comes into the day having played really poorly the last couple weeks. But, man, you look at how they played Michigan earlier in the season. It's a physical football team that has some talent on offense that can score some points. This is potentially a big drive, though, for Ohio State. Remember, Maryland gets the ball to start the second half. So big now for C.J. Stroud to steal some points. Anderson again trying to bounce this and get around the edge, but he's unable to do so as he was taken down by Glendon Miller. The coach is very high on him. Great play there. As you can see, watch how quickly he triggers from the third level at safety. He sees that handoff and boom. He goes immediately. If I'm the play caller there, if I'm Ryan Day, I'm making note of that. Hey, the safeties are really heavy in the run game. I had to take that up, take advantage of that in the second half with the heavy play action. 24 yards rushing today. Third and seven. Stroud. Shallow cross complete. Ameka Buka. And that is a first down for the Buckeyes. End of the play a few plays ago so Hayden the true freshman on third and two stays in as Stroud's in an empty set and it's incomplete he was looking for a buka Very similar play to what they ran a little earlier in a short yarded situation. Just a slant, three in breaking routes. This time it's covered up and the ball just a little bit too far out in front of Ibuka. Nice coverage there from Tariq Still. Stroud started the game three of four passing. He's six of 14 since then. As Mirko punts away. And it's a scatter as there was a Maryland player who nearly didn't see it and then still will just scoop it up for an extra yard. Hardest working players brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. How about the start for Talia Tungabailoa? 14 of 16 for 161 and a touchdown, but it hasn't really, I mean, he's been on fire. I mean, he had the drop too. One that was just the tiniest bit off target to Jay Sean Jones, but he keep that drive alive there. And then, of course, a couple plays later, finding the free for the touchdown. I mean, he has been outstanding so far going up against the defense in Ohio State that had been playing very good lately. You know, last two games, look at that line. He was battered, sacked 12 times. Today, 14-16, 161 passing yards and a touchdown. Mason Lunsford is back. He missed two games. He's the starting left guard. So that allows them to go back to their original offensive line they started the season with as Roman Hemby gets the carry. And what a difference that makes. Greg, they had a true freshman playing center the past couple weeks. Late flag. It's a huge difference. When you know the middle of your offensive line is solidified, man, it's a whole lot easier to stand back there in the pocket and pick apart the opposing defense. But a late flag here, and I might get Ohio State for a little extracurriculars. After the play, sportsmanlike conduct, defense, number six, 15-yard penalty. From the end of the play, automatic first down. That's his first of the game. That's on Jerron Vincent, and that's now seven Ohio State penalties. Seven in this first half. Let's take a look at exactly. Here's Vincent on the left over here. Right there, as you can see. Corey Deitches with the reception. Three time, uh, two timeouts remain for Maryland. And you see it right here, just picking up Jahari Branch there at the end of the play. Completely unnecessary. And now Maryland trying to steal some points. Here's Talia. 45 seconds before halftime, and he is sacked. And it is JT Tuimolao. One of the most promising big-time NFL prospects in all of college football. When he is on off the edge, he is devastating. Yeah, that is, that'll squander the drive pretty dang quickly as Maryland was trying to go down and steal some points before half, go a little two for one because they get 
the ball coming out, but now obviously Mike Loxley opting to take it to the break with a three-point lead. Either way, it's been a great first half for the Maryland Terrapins. Got to feel great about where they're at right now. Highly energized first half for Maryland. Talia will just put it downfield, able to get it complete to Demas, and triple zeros on the clock as the flag is down. That's the end of the first half. But they are saying that is the end of the first half. And now a little bit of confusion as Ron Snodgrass, the referee, is gathering his group. Offside. Defense number nine lined up in the neutral zone. Ohio State's in the locker room already for the most part. They're now having to come back out. The penalties decline. That's the end of the half. And now they're going to go in reverse. <laughs> hey, guys, come on back out here. Oh, no, never mind. Never mind. You just head right back Nine. in there. Yeah. Where you know they are going to have quite the chat with Ryan Day about playing clean football. Seven penalties in that first half. About executing and playing to the level of talent they have. Maryland outgained them 211 to 159. Katie. Thanks, Tess. Coach Loxley, you said you wanted your team to play desperate. They, they have not beaten a top five team since 2004. Moments ago, here's Katie with Coach Day. Coach Day, what do you need to see from your offense moving forward? Oh, we got to run the ball better. We got to get running up inside. I think we're getting some good movement. We're just not hitting it the way I think we should be able to hit it. We got some self-inflicted stuff going on. So uh, they start with the ball here in the second half. So we got to do a good job of getting the stop and, and getting that balance going. Thank you for the time. No Ryan Day saw his team come down the field with a 75-yard drive, six plays to open this game. C.J. Stroud had the touchdown pass to Trevion Henderson, a 31-yard touchdown pass. But it's just 6 of 14 since then. Maryland will have the ball to start things off. Here's Copeland on the return. As he gets his way out towards the 30-yard line. And since that opening drive, Greg, Four possessions and only 84 yards of offense for Ohio State. Yeah, and they've really struggled. I mean, you heard Ryan Day a second ago running the football. I mean, Travion Henderson, we're talking about a home run hitter. That's right. He's got 11 carries for 19 yards. And if you really look at the line of scrimmage, too, it's not like he's really missing a ton of holes. I know Ryan Day thought, kind of went back and looked a little bit. Maryland, at the point of attack, has won more often than they've lost. And I think that's got to be a little concerning. The challenge needs to be issued to the offensive line for the Buckeyes. Here's Hemby. As Hemby takes it ahead for six yards, tackled by Denzel Burke. As far as Ohio State's defense is concerned, they've been, for the most part, okay. I mean, they've held up pretty well against the run, both Hemby and Littleton, averaging less than four yards a carry. But Talia Tungabailoa has been terrific. 16 of 18 for 180 and a touchdown there in the first half. Touchdown went to Dupree. Second and four. It's incomplete. Right to the feet of Demas. The third down. Big third down here. First drive of the second half, I've always thought, is the most important drive of the game. When you get to make your adjustments and, and see whether or not you can have an, a tactical advantage here in the final 30 minutes. So, massive down here for the Buckeyes to force the potential three and out. That was just his third incompletion for Talia Tonga by Lowe. Third and four. And that's a first down to Demas. This has been a theme all game long. Ohio State, their corners, they've been very, very conservative. I mean, way off, giving up a lot of the underneath throws right here. And so you can see a little bit of a bunch formation. And they take advantage of the out route to the, to the boundary. Nice throw and catch for the conversion. Hemby on first down as he was just tripped up. At the 47-yard line by Lathan Ransom. Ransom, who had the broken leg suffered in the Rose Bowl, and yet he was back on the field practicing this past August. It's 
Second and four. Time to buy Lola. It's going to go to the other side. Well played that time. That was Ransom coming straight in on C.J. Dupree. And Ransom read it perfectly. Man, just a great job by Ransom. Tried to go with a little tight end screen. And you've seen, for the most part, Ohio State in the first half playing zone coverage. But when they're in man coverage like they were right there, tight end screen is not going to happen. Ransom did a great job and now forces the third and long. Ransom went right around the big right tackle, D.J. Glaze, and got to Dupree. Third down and 12. They're showing a gap pressure. As Ohio State bring it, or back off. Here they come, straight after him. Backing him up, and he just desperately had to throw it away as Steel Chambers was all over Talia Tungavailoa. Well, the old hey diddle diddle three up the middle blitz. It's going to overload every single protection. You get double A gap, and then you get the add on. On the back end, that's Ronnie Hickman who's following up. They don't pick it up initially, as you can see Tui Molo-Al also coming around the edge. Can't block that blitz. Can't do it. Got to come out. And it was the perfect play call by Jim Knowles. Spangler on the punt. He's having an excellent season, averaging nearly 46 yards per punt. It is blocked. It is blocked by the Buckeyes. And scooped up. Ransom came straight in, and Burke was on it. Lathan Ransom, who blocked a punt last week, who just made a couple great defensive plays, comes up big on special teams. He did it again. You're going to see the shield work a little bit to the right, and Ransom's going to come right around it with a beeline. Great effort there. And how about the sequence by Lathan Ransom? You have the tackle for loss against Dupree, and then you come back a couple plays later and make a great play. And now Hayden inside the 10-yard line, and that is exactly how you want to start a second half if you're Ohio State. Make an impact defensively. Make an impact on special teams. And just serve it up for your offense to try to retake this lead. And Dallin Hayden does just that. The true freshman from Christian Brothers Academy in Memphis, Tennessee. As Ryan Day said recently, this stage is not too big for him. The talent is there, and he is showing it again. What a turn. As Ruggles puts it through tackle holding offense number 50 10 yard penalty second down hey tomorrow on Sunday NFL countdown Matt Hasselbeck's going to go all access with Mahomes and Andy Reid and Justin Jefferson and the game's greatest wideouts breaking down the art of the one hand catch that's 10 Eastern on ESPN tomorrow morning and then we got Niners and Cardinals Monday Night Football from Mexico City at 8 Eastern on ESPN countdown gets it started at 6 p.m. Estadio Azteca I've done an NFL game there, and let me tell you, that is nosebleed. You're so high up. But it is a great setting, and the fans are so passionate at that grand cathedral of sports in Mexico. False start. Offense, number eight. Five-yard penalty. Second down. It's a true freshman, Brown. That's got to be so frustrating for Mike Loxley. You have such a great first half, a clean first half for the most part. You come out. You get stopped. Very quickly, Ohio State blocks the punt, takes the lead. Now all the pressure on the Terps. Just got to calm his guys down. As you can see, Mike Lobster trying to trying to cool him off a little bit. That's exactly what he said. Just calm down. Second and 18. Tonga Bailoa wants to take a shot, and that is batted away as Cam Brown had coverage. It was Jacob Copeland who was the targeted receiver. Yeah, like now, they were playing soft coverage. Now you see a press bail. 
As you can see, Cameron Brown starting over the line of scrimmage just talks you out of throwing the ball underneath and then sprinting out of there initially at the snap. Good job of tracking it. It's great to have him back in the lineup. Of course, very important to this secondary and very important out there on the island for the Buckeyes. He's their most experienced cornerback. Third and 18. Another big moment for Ohio State to make a swing. As Talia just grounds it. Trying to set up a screen there and Ohio State not fooled as Steel Chambers did a great job so far. These linebackers here in the second half for Ohio State playing a whole other level of intensity. But Steel Chambers and Eichenberg have been all over the field here in these first few series. Remember, they came after Spangler off the left side last time, and now they shift the protection to that side. Spangler. This is a nice catch here by Harrison on the sideline. Ball thrown just a little bit inside. He ever step out? It was difficult to tell. Boy, that was close. As Hayden takes it ahead for a first down. Looked like that right foot was very close to being out of bounds. But, you know, I said it earlier. His body control. He made a catch last week that was just absolutely out of control. <laughs> he makes a catch every week. Every week, it control. seems like. His body control is a thing that just <laughs> drops your jaw. Stroud on first down. Going to wind it up, take a shot downfield. But that is overthrown looking for Marvin Harrison Jr. Coverage came from Ja'Cory and Bennett. And he had one-on-one. -on -one. It's not often that you're going to get one-on-one -on -one with Marvin Harrison. That's one you got to drop in the bucket. Obviously, low percentage throw. But you would love to give your talented wide receiver an opportunity. Wind blowing a little bit right to left. Maybe it carried that ball just a hair, but that ball missed by about three or four yards. And that's one that C.J. Stroud would love to have back. Marv has to run all the way back now. Second and ten. Stroud going to go to Hayden. And he is met right beyond midfield by Still. That's right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten. Harrison's got to be gassed. He's run two straight routes downfield. Here he is at the bottom of the screen, but and his body language <laughs> indicates to me he's out of gas. I would not be looking in his direction if I'm C.J. Stroud. Third and ten. Stroud. Right into the hands of Abuka. First down, Buckeyes. And this is great coaching and a great call here from Ryan Day. You have the slot fade. They tried to go downfield a little earlier, but now you've worked the slot. And it's just an excellent catch and throw. Hayden wrapped up at the line of scrimmage by Finau. We told you a second ago that it was clear that Marvin Harrison was gassed. Ryan Day knew this, so look, he just runs him right here on a little short route. They run this the deep ball here, so you're saving your receiver who's gassed on the left. Instead, you're trying to attack the same part of the field, but you're doing so with a different wide receiver. It's an excellent job of identifying that and a great win, too, to the outside. They go with Abuka now on the handoff, and he's only able to get a yard that time as Bo Braid and Bennett combine for the tackle. Third down and nine. A big down here for the Maryland defense as Travion Henderson's back in the ball game. I feel like this is the first time we've seen him here in the second half, but this is a massive down for the Terps on defense. And Ohio State saw him winning a little bit, missed last week with an injury. Third down and nine. Brown roaring, looking for a stop here against Stroud. He is backed up, and he has to get rid of it as he's being tackled. That was Jay Sean Barham, who surged right in against C.J. Stroud. And the penalty comes in. And you're going to see the offensive line really go all the way to the left, and you're going to have Barham right up completely. 
Tried to go with stretch zone off the left-hand side, but watch, number 71 on the left side. He's bending. I mean, you get bend your knees, right? Don't want to bend at the hips. You want to bend at your knees, and he just kind of gets a little bit too top-heavy and steps way too far to the left. In slides Harrison and makes a nice tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Second 11, play action. Time to buy Loa. Gets out of the pocket, tucks, runs, will have the first down and more. As Salia Tungabailoa out to midfield, chased down by Ransom. A great job by Talia Tungabailoa. I mean, nothing open downfield, but he feels the corner run with the in-breaking route to the left-hand side. And there was nobody, not a single white jersey outside the hash to the left-hand side. And Talia... Makes by far the best play of the offense of the second half for the Maryland offense. Quickly with the receiver screen, Demas as he goes ahead for about three and a half, four yards. Brown cut him down. And the Vivaloa, who statistically among the best to ever play here. Second all time in school history and completions, passing yards, touchdowns. Of course, they had the great run of quarterbacks in the 80s with Boomer Sison, Frank Reich. Now Talia closing in on so many school records. Second and six. A little late with that as he was trying to get it to Rock Jarrett who was in a lot of traffic out on the edge. A possible four down territory here if you're Maryland. Third and six, obviously. Ohio State's offense has played pretty well so far here in the second half. I think you absolutely give Van Enos the green light. Two downs to get it here. And keep an eye on Rock Jarrett, number one. He's their go-to guy in situations like this. They motion him orbit around the back. Talia trying to run, but he's taken down by Eichenberg. Tommy Eichenberg. He is number one in the Big Ten in solo tackles, and he comes up big there on third down. The sixth tackle for loss for the Buckeyes. And I think this play was really to kind of set up a fourth down possibility. They try to go with a little quarterback power, but nobody, just a bust by the right side of the offensive line. Spencer Anderson, 54, I think was supposed to go to Eichenberg. They completely whiff on him, and that's the guy I'd probably try to block, especially in a vertical run. Spangler punts away. Fair catch at the 11-yard line. Now time for the Aflac trivia question. We're just talking about Mike Lapsley. Think about the head coaches in the history of Maryland. Which two Maryland head coaches won a national championship as a head coach at a different school? I know one. I do not know the other. Okay. No, everybody can sit back <laughs> and think about it for a little bit. Last time these two teams met here was 2018. It was an all-time classic. 52-51 in overtime. Ohio State. Today, it has been well contested. A tight one. Hayden takes it ahead as he goes for five yards. Ohio State came out, got the early score quickly. Henderson had the 31-yard touchdown catch. Maryland played consistent that first half. Finished it up with a 75-yard drive of their own with Tunga Vailoa and Dupree. And he had a 13-10 halftime lead. Block punt turned things around early on here in the second half for the Buckeyes. Second and five. Aiden again. This time he is pulled down just beyond the 20-yard line. Be third and short. Anthony Booker with the tackle. Third and short has been a little bit of a nightmare for Ohio State this year. It constantly tried to just run the football and pick up what would, you would think would be a very easy down and distance for this offense. But they've just not had great success on third and short. Let's see if they can find some room here in the run game to convert. True freshman Dallin Hayden remains in as the running back. Remember, Mayan Williams out injured today. 
Henderson's been dealing with a nagging injury, but look at Hayden. Nearly kept his balance. It's a first down Ohio State. He is going to be something. Very nicely done up front, too. By the right side of the offensive line, Hayden squeaks right in behind Matthew Jones, number 55. And Luke Weipler, Rippler up front at center as well. Really well executed and a nice seam hit by Hayden. As Henderson looks on. Henderson, 11 carries for only 19 yards. Freshman continues to get work and goes ahead for nine yards. His father played running back for the Tennessee Vols back in the 90s, went on to the NFL for four years. Not the biggest guy, but slithery and fast and great football instincts. Dallin Hayden. You can see the commitment now that Ohio State has made here in the third quarter to try to establish the line of scrimmage and the challenge that was issued by Ryan Day to the run game and the offensive line is certainly coming to fruition here in the first 15 minutes of the second half. Going to stay with it. This time, Hayden is thrown back, stacked up and thrown back by Henry Trebuzzi. I don't really understand that run. I mean, they've been doing such a great job on the vertical run game, especially the last couple plays. Now you try to hand it, and they try to capture the edge, and you're kind of playing into Maryland's strength there. I mean, Maryland's an athletic group, especially at the second level. Run right at them. Really no point to try to run around them. Big Mitch Rossi, number 34, is going to come in offset eye with Hayden still the running back on third and one. And he will have the first down at midfield. Reminder, statement Saturday will continue tonight on ESPN. Tennessee, South Carolina at 7 o'clock. We'll get to see Hendon Hooker. And then later tonight, it is a good one out west. Utah and Oregon, number 10, number 12, 1030 on ESPN. Kellen Wyatt on the ground now. The linebacker for Maryland. A little shaken up after that play, kind of pointing to his right leg. Hopefully he'll be all right. Aflac trivia question we asked. Said you got two Maryland head coaches all the time that went on to win national championships elsewhere. You said you know one of them. I know one. Go for it. Bear Bryant. Well, you should know that one. It's <laughs> a guy who won a national championship at Alabama. <laughs> and the other one, Bobby Ross. I should have gotten that one. That's an easy one. I don't know what I was thinking. Bobby Ross would be the one that would be more obvious. I feel like Bear Bryant would be the tricky one. What do you think, Tess? Heavy play action, throw it downfield right here? Why not? Heavy play action, see if you can't throw a big post. Let's see. They've been feeding Hayden. You think that front's going to bite on it? They give it to him, and he only gets a yard. And Darius Cowan with the tackle. Guy who was at Alabama, then went to West Virginia, transferred here from West Virginia played against Maryland last year when he was at West Virginia and actually sacked Talia Tunga Vailoa. Second and nine, Stroud, shallow cross, Harrison Jr. Flag is down as Marvin Harrison Jr. for the time being has an Ohio State first down at the 31. They're going to get a hold on the defense here. Looks like they tackled Mecca Buka. So he was trying to run downfield. It's the only way you can stop these wide receivers sometimes. <laughs> what a group they have. Of course, Olave and Garrett Wilson last year, and they just reload. Holy Here's the next crop. Defense, the Phillies decline. The result for play, first down. You see the shallow cross. They got a couple of these, but I love that right there. Harrison, he kind of feels that second presence to the outside, so he comes back towards the line of scrimmage a little bit to shorten that throw and to get a little bit more momentum as you try to get around the edge. Just so friendly. Just, he just does all the little things that his dad did that made him so elite, as you can see now. Over a 1,000 yards on the season and 
in prime position to potentially bring home the Bolitnikov a few weeks from now. Family's got a lot of hardware. Dad's got the gold jacket. Aiden goes ahead for two yards. That's what's so special about Marvin Harrison, though. I mean, he he's a big body wide receiver with the the littler, smaller wide receiver nuance. Yes, he's got exactly. All the footwork. He's got great body control, but it's just tremendous. No, he's a total package. I mean, the sky's the limit for what he can be, especially at the next level. And think about what he's doing here. And a crazy hard worker, too. <laughs> he is. He's always in there. They say him and the jugs machine are best friends. Stroud. Second and eight to the outside. That is incomplete. He was looking for Fleming. Flag is down as he was met by Jacorian Bennett. Loxley's not happy about that one. That's our Ferris. Defense. Number two will be placed in spot of foul. Let's take a look as Bennett they had been pretty physical in the first half of the football game as he grabbed a little bit of the jersey there with his right hand as he's trying to come back man those were the things early in the game kind of letting them play and now it's almost like the second half they've kind of adjusted you got to be consistent from half to half so if you don't call it the first half you can't call it now I don't necessarily agree with that call Stroud on first down. Inside the 10 is Stover. And it is a first and goal, Buckeyes. 14 yard reception, Kate Stover. That was a nice throw. Probably the best throw so far from CJ Stroud on the day. I mean, that window was fairly tight. He had to throw it around the defender to Stover. And and he put it right on his face mask. Hayden behind Lawson right in. His second touchdown. Dallin Hayden. Mitch Rossi comes in for a reason. Time to be a bulldozer. Hayden's got the speed, has the moves, and the Buckeyes have themselves a cushion. Things have changed here in this third quarter, haven't they? go back to CJ Stroud's throw to Stover on the shallow cross the window is fairly tight you can see Stover working across the field is pretty well covered as you can see there Hippolyte I mean there's not a lot of room that's pretty good coverage that's pretty much in phase but you see he's a little bit turned around he sees the defender get a little turned around you see him just hold it for a half second and then he puts it right out in front as Hippolyte had pretty decent coverage and a play or two later, Dallin Hayden finds the end zone as Mike Loxley is still very upset. Looking right at the official that called the pass interference a couple plays earlier. Ohio State couldn't run the ball in the first half. They had 28 yards in the first half. Third quarter here, 52 yards rushing just in the third quarter. They've done a really nice job up front and then defensively they've clamped down as well I think Maryland's offense has only had about 40 yards here in the second half Dallin Hayden has 70 yards and two touchdowns all of a sudden now a quick word from Cheez-It say cheese I'll feel cute I might delete these later. Don't delete them. I look good. Crop yourself out. My hair does look amazing. Cheese it. Feeling the cheesiest. Two third quarter touchdown runs for Hayden. 14 point margin. 
Number two, Ohio State. You know, we were down on the field before the game kick. Everybody was looking at that Michigan store. I was with Justin Fry, the Ohio State offensive lineman. He said, that's good for us. That'll tell our kids a little something. Maybe they got the message at halftime after Maryland came out and gave everything they could. Eichenberg with a nice play defensively on Hemby. 27 to 13. All three phases for the Buckeyes coming through in that third quarter. Special teams playing a really big part. Like Ransom with the block punt. Yeah, no doubter. Ball's well thrown, exactly where it needs to be. I think that's a good penalty there for the Ohio State secondary. First and goal with the ball on the 10-yard line. Of course, these yards have been hard to come by for Maryland all game long. Only one touchdown, but a few red zone penetrations. Gets it to Hemby out of the backfield. Hemby with that leg drive gets to the five-yard line. Good pad leverage as he turned his body around as well. Roman Hemby. Ronnie Hickman with the tackle for the Bucks. Second and goal. Talia going to keep it, and he's going to get in. What a great drive to open up this fourth quarter for Maryland. Talia Tungabailoa with the five-yard touchdown run. And you see him signaling to go for two. I like going for two here because it gives you a chance to potentially win the game. Of course, you're probably going to go for two. And you, even if you miss it, you got a chance to score and go for two again. I like this aggressive here from Mike Loxley. That is one of the key words they have said all week. Be aggressive. Be desperate. Don't play scared. They're not. Two-point try for Maryland. Inside receiver screen, and they got it with Copeland. The most demoralizing play in college football. When you have a great drive offensively, the energy in the building, everyone's going nuts, thinking they're back in the game. And then, boom, the kickoff return happens. And how about Xavier Johnson just hitting the burners, man, and taking off. Excellent blocks on the edges as well. Very, very nicely done by the kickoff return unit for the Buckeyes. Goes for 46 yards on that return. Stroud on first down. Has plenty of time. Nobody in front of him as he tucks. And then gets it across midfield. Down at the 47-yard line. Heisman front runner as it stands right now. Of course, the big notch on the belt, if you survive today, would come next week. Hayden, he's had a great second half, and that will move the chains again. Flag is down. We'll check on that. But Hayden with two touchdowns in the third quarter to build up this Ohio State lead that was just cut into. Flag was thrown really late around the pile. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 25. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. It's a safety, Bo Braid. Let's take a look at Braid. Just reaches up. And yeah, good call there by the official. He hangs on, too. I mean, good call by the official. Another big penalty now has the Buckeyes knocking on the door. Didn't take much after that great return by Johnson. 
Back on the penalty, and here they are already inside the 30. Stroud. As he's able to connect with Emeka Abuka. Let's take a look. Did he hang on? Some of the Maryland defenders thought he dropped it, but bobbled initially. Ooh, it was pretty close. Hayden. Inside the 10. Kept his foot again. Gets in. Dallin Hayden. 13-yard touchdown run. His third of this second half. He has arrived. The true freshman from Memphis. A great job by the left side of the offensive line, too. We're going to see number 79. Dewan Jones give a little little shoulder shove too excellent execution and a great response from the Buckeyes and now because of the margin being 12 they're gonna keep the offense on the field and go for two it's amazing what special teams can do how quickly special teams can swing a game it happened with the block punt for the Buckeyes with ransom it happened with that guy Xavier Johnson with a 46 yard kick return now to try to get it back to a 14 point margin delay game offense five yard penalty still in the try so they will bring ruggles out after the penalty the police kicker will trot on out there i'd still go for it though i mean i i just yep. because of the way the scoreboard yeah i mean what's that, the difference right. between 12 or 13 i mean i don't think you really gain anything there so i'd still go for it if anything yeah you got a little more room now to potentially work a few more a few more throws that kind of move the ball a little bit further down the field I, i'm not really sure why they're kicking it here and it is blocked and here's the return fact that you will hear from so many in that Virginia community students athletes and our ESPN crew joins Ohio State joins Maryland in praying for peace and for comfort for all in that UVA community and it's been a difficult week for everybody in college football of just digesting everything that happened and we think about Devin and Deshaun and Lavelle and their families and there is the UVA strong decal with that heart over Charlottesville just an unspeakable tragedy, just devastating, absolutely devastating. Second and ten, Tonga by Lowe downfield, and it's a big catch by Jarrett. Rock Jarrett has the Terps in position again as he beat McAllister downfield. Back and forth they go here at College Park. Man, how about the throw from Talia Tungabalo? That ball was up in the air forever. Beautifully adjusted to by Jarrett. Hemby. Hemby inside the five. This game has delivered everything, and here is Maryland knocking on the door again. I mean, look at the protection. It's perfect. Allows Talia to step into it. And boom, 50 yards downfield in the perfect location. Hemby trying to drive for that goal line. He's going to be just short down at the one-yard line. Just a 10-point margin as it stands now because of the wacky circumstances we saw when Bennett returned the two-point conversion off the blocked extra point attempt. Number two, Ohio State being pushed to the limit here by this scrappy Maryland team who was shut out a week ago by Penn State, but has found a little something energized, playing hungry and desperate and aggressive today. They're going to bring in number 95, Fontaine, as an extra tight end. Third and goal. Stacked up, driven back. Tommy Eichenberg filling that hole. He is so physical. And fast, and he's been thriving in this Jim Knowles defense. I think you have to go for it here. You're on the one-yard line. It sends the right message. 
to your team. Ohio State's going to make some substitutions. Maryland's going to get into 11 personnel with just one tight end, one running back, and three wide receivers. I wonder if they can run with that same play, very similar play to what they ran earlier on the two-point conversion. Here's your fourth and goal. Tonga Bailoa being chased down, looking for anything to the end zone, and that is in the hands of Jones. He found him. Talia Tonga Bailoa, a little bit of magic here at the shell. Wow. Just forever. Talia extended the play and allowed Jones to cross all the way across the field. Can you believe this? A Maryland team that has been struggling offensively. An Ohio State team that is pushing towards the playoff. And here we have it in the fourth quarter. 33 to 30 in an absolute thriller. Who can forget a few years ago, back in 2018, this Maryland team gave Ohio State all they wanted. And let's remember exactly what that sounded like that day in College Park. It is fourth down. He's short. Do you go for it? Askins keeps it. Dives in. Touchdown, Buckeye. First and goal on the one. Fleet Davis is in. Touchdown, Maryland. And the Terrapins are going for the win. Pigram looking. Throws. No. Right there, the two-point conversion attempt. Terrell Pigram was the quarterback, the intended target on that two-point conversion attempt to win it. Jay Sean Jones, who is just on the receiving end of that touchdown from Talia Tungabailoa. Things are getting weird in College Park. Look who snuck in. That's next week. We got a thriller to finish this week. Take one more look. I mean, this play just forever. Tui Molo'au almost makes the play completely out of room. And sure enough, the savior right there, Jayshon Jones, finding a little bit of open space and reeling it in. 293 yards passing today for Tunga Bailoa. And with that, he is now the career passing yards leader in Maryland history. Hayden, well blocked. He's had such a big second half as he goes ahead. Just past the 30-yard line. Hayden has 95 yards rushing. Three touchdowns in this second half. We haven't seen Trayvon Henderson in a while. You can see, I mean, anytime you join Ezekiel Elliott, clearly you're playing pretty good football. As Travion Henderson looks on, just didn't have his best stuff today. Clearly still affected by that injury. Second and four play action. Stroud's going to go to him out the backfield. Here's Hayden now. Another first down for Ohio State. This has been such a fun fourth quarter, hasn't it? With 30 points scored in the last four minutes and 27 seconds. And the last time Maryland got within striking distance, Ohio State just boom, right down the field. With an answer, of course, the extra point was blocked and returned, so Maryland left the field with a couple points of their own, but either way, you know, Ohio State's responded beautifully to adversity here in the second half. Can they do it again here? Stroud took a big hit. 
from Bo Brave and is cut down. Remember, you still got Tennessee and South Carolina coming up on ESPN tonight. Statement Saturday. You know, this is an odd day because a lot of people look at this day and say, eh, you don't have the best matchups. You got a lot of big favorites with teams that are on top of the rankings. And man, oh man, has it been a fun one between what we saw with TCU and Michigan and now this here at Maryland as he goes with the shallow cross to Mecca Abuka. But it's well defended by Tarheep still. Flag is down. And they're marking it short. Cade Stover had to come back for the ball. And he is a yard short. So it's fourth and one. And Stroud is limping as he looks over to Ryan Day. Oh, boy. Fourth and one now for Ohio State. A down in distance that has definitely given them some fits this year. Critical down for Maryland on defense. Under seven minutes to play. Fourth and one. And he's going to pass. C.J. Stroud on fourth and one. Coming back for the ball is Harrison, and it's incomplete. A turnover on downs, and Maryland will have the ball, trailing only by three. Let's take a look now. Does he get hands underneath it? Oh, as you can see, I mean, his hands were in a pretty good spot, but it looks like the ball kind of goes through almost. Yeah, and he kind of looks like he kind of traps it there a little bit as well. The official was right there. I mean, it was right in front of him. It does look like that ball does touch the ground a little bit right between the arms. Man, it's actually pretty dang good play there from Marvin Harrison. Almost made the play. But man, how demoralizing if you're Ohio State and you can't pick up a fourth and one if you don't trust your team enough to run the ball in short yardage. Hamby straight ahead and then taken down by Eichenberg. C.J. Stroud in that offense unable to convert on fourth down. Second and six at the 46. Second and seven. Incomplete. It'll be third down. He was trying to get it to Debris. Eichenberg was coming in on Tunga Vailoa. Thirty-six straight losses in conference games against ranked opponents. This is the number two team in the country. They're going to the wire with third and seven. You know where I'm looking. I'm looking at number one. Rockham Jarrett looks like a pressure look from Ohio State. If I'm down, I'm looking at like an out route right here. Rock and Jarrett working against that inside leverage. Look at all those Buckeyes crammed up towards the line. Jim Knowles calling that defense. Third and seven. Tonga by Loa. Can he convert? Steps up in the pocket. Being chased. Extending. Here comes the pressure. Throws it away to the sideline. And it's incomplete there. As Copeland was the closest man who could try to make a play on it. And he was covered by McAllister. Man, this is a great disguise from Jim Knowles' defense. I saw exactly that. It's hard to drive the football. Hayden goes for five more yards. He has 114 rushing yards and three touchdowns. Travion Henderson is in a walking boot. So Mayan Williams, who last week left the game with 147 yards and then got injured. Henderson was wincing earlier in pain. We haven't seen him, and now he's in a boot. And now they lean on Hayden, the true freshman, who's been magnificent. Last week, he was the only scholarship running back available after the Williams injury. This week, they got Henderson back. Hayden may have to play a starring role next week against Michigan. He's trying to fight for a little more yardage. Gets a couple there. It'll be third down. Another big third down here for the Buckeyes. What are they going to do? 
have used a lot of shallow crosses today. It looks like you're probably going to get man coverage. You can look at that. You saw the left defensive end jump into that neutral zone. That was Cowan. Outside defense, number eight, five-yard penalty results in a first down. And you could see him grab his head right away saying, what did I just do? And combined penalties tonight, 20 penalties for 178 yards. 178 combined penalty yards in this game. It's amazing. I mean, it has not been the cleanest game we've seen this year, that's for sure. But it has been wildly entertaining. Can't imagine they try to throw it here. Just continue to lean on that front. Hayden. Look at him go again. He got a nice block on the right side. And he goes for 18 more yards. He's got 135 on the day. And they're really leaning on the right side of this offensive line. You can see the big fella, Dewan Jones, missed last week's game. Josh Fryer got the start, but Dewan Jones back. And they're certainly using his 360 pounds to their advantage right now. As they continue to dent the edges of this Maryland defense. How about today? Just how crazy is college football? TCU, a little hurricane field goal, running out there at the very end to kick it to the uprights, and then not but 10 minutes later, Michigan put in the game on ice against the Illini after the Illini proved to be very, very worthy today as you can see let's take a look at our college football playoff rankings brought to you by chick-fil-a of course not pretty but it looks good as georgia goes on the road to kentucky shutting down the wildcats of course you have some action coming up tonight usc at ucla and then of course oregon and utah in the pac-12 i mean just tremendous matchups out west so very very excited about those games coming up in just a little bit. Matthew Jones, who is the starting right guard, he has been dealing with a foot injury this year. You know, so much talk this week. You mentioned it very early at the start of this broadcast about how when you listen to all the endemic media this week, all the discussion is about the game next week, the right, game next right, week. And, right. You know, can we get our starters out? Can we build a lead and keep things safe? Yeah, if, when you have that approach, guess what? Bad yeah. things happen. And I, look, I listen to a ton of podcasts and, and just things like that. And I've listened to a bunch of Ohio State podcasts this week. And I, I'm not kidding. I don't think I heard the word Maryland one time. Uh, I, all I heard was Michigan or the team up north, what have you. I'm sure if I would have listened to a ton of Michigan podcasts, it probably would have been much. very much dominated by the game next week. So it's a good teachable moment I think for coaches across college football that you never want to devalue the opponent that's coming up on Saturday and I don't think necessarily Ohio State did that Maryland man they have come to play and has made it very difficult for an Ohio State team that has been really really good all season long well you mentioned you listen to a lot of podcasts there's the podcast I listen to every day always college football Greg's daily football podcast. Best information analysis out there. I appreciate you guys getting that in and enjoy talking about ball. I can promise we're going to have a wild show on Monday. But some of these results continue to surprise us. Here's your third and six. Stroud. As he goes to Abuka. And Abuka has it for a first down. Does he get underneath it? Looks like he does. And it's a great effort by Emeka Abuka to get those arms underneath the ball. Charge timeout. Maryland, their third and final timeout. 30-second timeout. So that exhausts all the timeout that Mike Loxley has. Three minutes to play, no timeouts. Ohio State by three. Here's that catch by Abuka. Great effort by Abuka. 
getting his arms underneath it. Looks like he definitely has control all the way through. I see it hit the ground at any point. Of course, every play is, is looked at thoroughly. It does kind of hit there at the top. The nose of the football does touch, but it does feel like it's in firm control as it touches. But, man, heck of a catch there by Emeka Ibuka. He has 82 yards today. He's had four 100-yard games this year. You know, consider what it is at this time in November when you're playing against the top five team and the history of Maryland, the, how rare of a feat it is for them to compete against the big guys. Top five teams in the CFP rankings when they have a 14 point or more lead in the fourth quarter, 127 and 0. And Ohio State opened up this fourth quarter with a two touchdown lead. Aiden takes it ahead for a couple yards. Remember, no timeouts remaining for Maryland. Here, Ohio State obviously picking up the first down would be outstanding. You could put the game on ice and kneel on it, but. Ultimately, it's not worth fighting for the extra yards if it potentially puts ball security at risk. So this is where C.J. Stroud needs to remind Hayden, the freshman, who's had tremendous ball security all season long. Remember, double over the football. No need to try to be a hero in this situation. Don't fight for the extra yards. It's just not worth it. Because really, the only way Maryland can essentially win this game is if Ohio State puts it on the deck. Aiden, and we'll hold on, keep it safe. Two more yards to his total. He's up to 143 yards rushing. There's a lot to be proud of with this effort from Maryland today. That is a concern with Trevion Henderson in a boot. Normally you'd say they'd run off right tackle, but without their starting right guard, you gotta think they're probably just gonna try to surge right up the middle and see if they can't get some push between the tackles. Matthew Jones left the game moments ago. A timeout is going to be used by Ohio State. Reminder, college basketball coming your way on ESPN. Tomorrow, Kentucky taking on Gonzaga in Spokane, number four and number two at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Now we know what happened last year with Ohio State, Michigan, the Michigan win at Michigan. C.J. Stroud was sick prior to the game. You know, they, not to make excuses, but everybody around Ohio State will tell you, man, the flu was running through that locker room yeah. last year. Uh, what do you expect next week in sizing both <laughs> these teams up? Uh, I think it's going to be thrilling. I, I really do. I think if there's one team that I think can neutralize the talent advantage, it's a, it's Michigan. I, I do think that Michigan has a recipe that will be difficult for Ohio State to match them physically. But can Michigan match Ohio State athletically? That's the real question. So I, I think it's going to be a tremendous game next week. But still, 90 seconds away from being hit. We'll talk about that one. Third and six, Hayden. And take it ahead for three yards, tackled by Bo Braid. Another interesting angle here. I mean, Ohio State, last time Ruggles was out on the field, had the extra point blocked and returned to the house. Right. So, obviously, that's kind of a freak moment, but still kind of in the in everyone's mind. How could it not be? You know, take another 15 seconds off this clock. They were going to go for two, try to make it a 14-point margin. Then they got a penalty, backed it up, and it was kind of a casual extra point that got blocked in return for a, sw a swing of two, and that made it a 10-point margin. And they used the timeout, leaving 47 seconds. But the story of this second half was Hayden stepping in at running back. 
and they really have featured him as well. I mean, goodness gracious, they've done a great job along the front. You look at the offensive line, they deserve immense credit. There was not a lot of movement along the line of scrimmage in the first half. I mean, Maryland really hung in there and held at the point of attack, really for the first 30 minutes, but that has not really been the case for most of the second half. Hayden has responded beautifully to being thrust into the featured back role, man, and he's gonna have a very, very bright future. Maybe not the home run threat, that Henderson is, man, but he can make those four and five yard runs on a regular basis look really easy. Ruggles on to attempt the 45 yarder. As beautifully struck. And that makes it a six point margin with 42 seconds left. 43 combined points in the second half of this game. 43. Ohio State was down three at half. Nicely done there by Ruggles, but he can't help but go back to the blocked extra point. That being a three-point swing. I mean, you have a scenario there where this game would be at nine and it'd be Correct. all she wrote. And yet, now Maryland's going to get the ball with a chance to potentially steal this thing in regulation. No timeouts, though. If you're Mike Loxley, you're going and talking to Talia Tungabaloa and reminding everybody, hey, the sideline is your friend. Make sure that you're also very aware of the clock mechanics as well, where you might have to spike the football after you get a first down. A lot of conversations we heard this week of talking to these Maryland players of saying, hey, when you signed on to play here, these were the moments that you were thinking about. Copeland from a yard in the end zone. Nowhere to go. Just made it out to the 16-yard line. It seemed like that entire coverage unit was driving him back. What a fourth quarter it has been for Talia. Just phenomenal. I mean, did it on the first drive of the fourth quarter with his legs, then hit the two-point conversion here. And how about the deep throw, too? I mean, dropping it in the bucket about 50 yards in the air to Rock Jarrett. Then on fourth down, finding Jones in the back of the end zone. Talia Tungabailoa has a chance now to be a hero. Can he do what Tyrell Pigron could not do four years ago when they came up just short? Keep in mind, no timeouts. And he is brought down by Zach Harrison. Now you got to hurry. Uh, part of the problem is you have Demas, who is 40, 50 yards downfield, running all the way back now, wasting precious seconds. Fourth sack by Ohio State. From his own end zone. Again, balls in the air, and it's a score. Still Chambers. The pressure from Harrison got to Tonga by Loa, and the ball ends up in Steel Chambers' arms for a touchdown, Buckeyes. And Tonga by Loa is still down at the end of that play. Leah as he escapes to his right you see Harrison just kind of lands on that knee has a knee brace on his right knee kind of lands awkwardly on it and Harrison of course strips the ball and ends up right in the hands of Steel Chambers what a moment there to put this game on ice for the Ohio State Buckeyes Actually, two Maryland players that were down at the end of that play. And we'll see who they're huddled around right now. As it is, Tungavailoa. 
Hopefully he's okay. He played whale of a game. And just left it all on the field and hopefully it's nothing too serious with that right leg. On a day when he becomes the all-time passing leader in Maryland history. On a day when they took their best shot at the number two team in the country. Gave everything, absolutely everything, and played the way their coaching staff wanted them to play. Fearlessly, not scared. A week after they were shut out. And you can see it's a little limping. But he's going to walk off the field on his own. And that guy, Zach Harrison, just put a stamp on it the last two plays. What an incredible finish. And how about the Buckeyes, man? I mean, it was not their best performance by any stretch, but, man, they were tested, and they answered the call and get a hard-fought victory to set up the showdown next week. Now it's appropriate to talk about the team up north. Now I think Ryan Day will probably allow it. You see Tonga Bailoa gingerly walking on that right leg to the sideline. What an incredible effort from that young man. A turnover and the touchdown to seal this in a wild second half so entertaining so much drama from special team in a game that was being smothered with defense and critical plays it was only 13 to 10 maryland and then 50 combined points in the second half 50 And Maryland never got the lead back after that block punt by Ohio State. set up what could be the most anticipated edition of the game in quite a while and I think it's been a year in the making this one feels like even though this Ohio State Michigan always feels big this one this one means a little bit more I can't wait for next week but I'm also going to come away from this performance Feeling really, really proud of the effort put forth by the Maryland Terrapins. They battled every step of the way. Eric Nigerian has to come in for Tonga Bailua, and he completes this pass to Copeland to close out this game. In a spirited effort by the Terps, but a win by the Buckeyes to now set up the big one. Next week. Back home against Michigan. Mike Loxley's team fought. Ryan Day's team gave it to them in the fourth quarter when they had to. Katie. Thanks, Tess. Coach Day, your team remains perfect without playing perfectly. What did you think of your group's ability to weather the storm? I thought we played well in the second half. Um, you know, the first half didn't think that was the case, but we'll go back and try to figure out why that was. But I thought we were gutsy. Did a great job in the third quarter. Good job of finishing out the game here in the fourth.